Hi, as Revit users, you probably heard of Revit API at some point. And finally, you decided to find out what is Revit API, what are the benefits of using it, and how can you start using it. I will also cover how to set up your development environment and how to get started in the next videos. But for now, let's focus on Revit API to be sure that we are on the same page. So what is Revit API? API stands for Application Programming Interface. Simply put, it's a documented set of instructions written by developer of an application to share pieces of functionality of their software. This allows us to create custom add-ins for applications using many pre-written methods. So Revit API is just a way for us to access Revit functionality with a code instead of clicking our mouse over and over. And this allows us to create custom tools and automate our boring tasks. And we will use this quite a lot when we code, because we need to find and understand how to use certain classes and methods when we need them. And don't worry, you won't need all of them. You'll be able to create a lot of tools with just a handful of classes, but you'll need to understand how to use this documentation to apply it in your code. And I'm going to focus on that in the next module of this course. So now you understand what Revit API is, and you probably started to think of all possible benefits of using it, right? It can allow us to easily customize Revit to create custom add-ins that are tailored to our specific needs. We could automate our boring and repetitive tasks, optimize our designs, analyze data and create reports, export data or import data from another software, standardize our projects, protect projects from the users, and even do things that are not possible to do manually, all thanks to Revit API access. So how can we use this magical Revit API, you might ask? There are multiple ways of using it. We can code in c -sharp, use Dynamo nodes, but my preferred way is to write code in Python and then execute it using PyRevit or Revit Python shell. And it's super easy to use them. Huge shout out to PyRevit dad Eshan for creating PyRevit and to Jean-Marc for being very active in the community and improving PyRevit functionality. They deserve more credit. Also, if you paid attention, you might have noticed that Revit API is documented for c -sharp, VB.NET and C++ languages. Unfortunately, Python is not officially supported by Autodesk but it doesn't mean that Python is lacking some functionality. Python is a great language for RAID API, especially for beginners, because it's easy to learn and use, has a large and active community of developers, and it's very easy to convert C-sharp snippet into Python. So this shouldn't hold you back. And I'm here to help you get started with Revit API. As I teach people how to use Revit API with Python, keep in mind that I also create a lot of free and open source tools for Autodesk Revit, and you can access them in my EF tools extension, which is used by thousands of people. Not only you can use these tools in your daily work, you also have access to all my source code behind my tools. You can use it as a learning resource or you can modify it to suit your own needs. This will make sure that you will never start from scratch. Lastly, let me demonstrate how Revit API is actually used. Now that we know what Revit API is and why Python is a great choice, let's see some magic in action. First, I'm going to manually create a text node and we will observe all the steps that I take. And then we will look what is happening behind the curtain that makes it all work. So now I'm in my Revit, I'm gonna go to annotate, then I'm gonna click on text, and I'm gonna choose any point on the screen. And then I can write any text I want. Obviously, it's very simple to create text node manually. But now let's do the same, but with the code. Open the Revit API documentation and find a method that creates text node in Revit API. I'm going to write text node in search, then I'm gonna click on methods, and I'm gonna click on create method. As you can see, there are four different methods with minor differences. You can read their description if you want to, but I'm just gonna select the first one. And as you can see in the syntax, we need to provide a few arguments to create our text node. We need the document, which means our project, then view ID, position, text, and text type ID. We can also see their respective classes on the left right here, so we know what type of argument we actually need to provide. And if you scroll down, there's even more description about each of these arguments. It also tells here what is gonna be returned and some possible exceptions and remarks. Let's copy this part right here and then go to PyCharm, where I will translate it to Python. So now we can paste the snippet that we just copied and you can see everything is highlighted in red because this is a C-sharp snippet and my environment is made for Python. So let's fix that. First of all, we don't need this public static. Then we need to remove the spacing and make a dot between text node and create. And then we're gonna remove types of each argument. And now it's valid for using in Python. Let's make it in one line so it doesn't take as much space. And also I'm gonna create a new variable here called new text. So you can see all of my arguments are highlighted in red because they are unresolved references. So let's get all our argument so it works properly. First, let's get document, which means open project in our Revit. Then we can get active view from this document and get its element ID. For position, I'll create a point with XYZ class and give coordinates equal to zero. Then you can write here all the text that has to be displayed in our text node. 
And lastly, we can get default text type used in Revit. And for that, we're gonna use get default element type ID method. Inside, we need to provide element type group, which is an enumeration, meaning it's a list that contains all possible values that we can choose from. And in my case, I'm gonna choose text node type. Now we have all the arguments, but since we are trying to modify our project by creating a new text node, we need to use transaction. This way you can control when you actually want to make any changes in your projects and avoid unwanted changes. So first we need to declare our transaction and then we need to start and commit it. And whatever changes we are trying to make have to be between start and commit statements. So I'm gonna copy this line and paste it right in here. Now this code is complete and we can go to Revit and try it. But first of all, I'm gonna select all of this and copy. Then in your Revit, I'm gonna go to add-ins tab and use interactive Python shell. Then I'm gonna paste all the code I wrote here and then click on this run button. And right away you can see that text has appeared on the screen. So while creating a single text node might not be worth it, creating text nodes across hundreds of views would certainly be worth it. And this is where power of Revit API becomes really noticeable. And as you saw, it's not that complicated once you learn the basics. And if you want to continue your journey of learning Revit API, be sure to watch this video where I will help you to create your development environment for Revit API with Python.